Whales and dolphins are not fish. They're mammals. About 55 million years ago, their ancestors gave up the land and began to live in the sea. At Stanford University, biologist David Kingsley is investigating the mystery of how the whale lost its legs. If you look at a whale, they're streamlined, they're able to swim at uh, high speeds in the ocean. The streamline has been achieved by the loss of what would normally be a hind limb structure. The whale's ancestors transformed their front legs into flippers. But how did they lose their hind legs completely? What change in DNA caused this to happen? The answer to this huge problem comes down to one of the smallest animals on the planet. Sticklebacks come in two forms. Some have a hind limb, and for a good reason. In this rare film, a trout attempts to swallow a stickleback. But the hind limb makes the stickleback too wide to swallow, and it escapes. But in ponds without trout, some sticklebacks have lost their hind limbs. And this provides a clue to how the whale lost its legs. In his laboratory, Kingsley and his team look for the genes responsible for the stickleback's disappearing limbs. They found that the development of the fish's hind limbs is largely controlled by a gene called PIDX1. It's only a single gene itself, but it's a white-collar gene. The way that a hind fin develops requires this uh, manager gene uh, turning on very early in development and coordinating the activity of a whole series of other genes. Fish with hind limbs and fish without them both contain the PIDX1 gene. What makes them different is not the gene itself, but a nearby piece of DNA. In sticklebacks with hind limbs, a piece of DNA called a regulating switch responds to a chemical stimulus and turns the PIDX gene on. The hind limb grows. But in sticklebacks without hind limbs, a small change of DNA in the switch has inactivated it. The gene doesn't turn on when it should, and the hind limb doesn't develop. Kingsley and his team now think that what happened in the stickleback also occurred in whales. A small change of DNA in the regulating switch in the ancestors of whales could have turned off the PIDX1 gene. It would have stopped their hind legs developing. The discovery of switches that turn genes on and off reveals how one species transforms itself into another. It also explains why the genes of animals are so similar. One extreme point of view is that basically all the animals, you know, from the simplest worms right up to humans, have more or less the same complement of genes. What has happened that makes all these animal groups so very different from one another is that the genes are deployed in different ways. The new science of genetics shows that evolution can occur faster and more easily than scientists thought. For over 140 years, people have attacked Darwin's theory. But look at the evidence, and the objections don't stand up. One by one, science has proved them wrong. The evidence is so overwhelming that knowledgeable experts now regard the theory of evolution as fact. Was Darwin wrong? You're serious. Was Darwin wrong? He was one of the first people with the intelligence and imagination to get it right. All of this information, this vast crush of knowledge, has vindicated Darwin in general, in particular, specifically, and every other way. There's always going to be things we don't know about nature. But what we know is so profound and so elegant and shows us so dramatically how evolution happened, including our own evolution, that it's an inescapable fact. Natural selection not only explains the rich variety of the natural world, it's the only rational explanation for it. From the color of flowers to the fins of a whale. From a distance, the variety and richness of life is dazzling. 
It can seem almost like a miracle. But the real miracle is that simple natural laws can create such an extraordinary and varied world. And that one of nature's own creations, the human mind, is capable of understanding the simple scientific truth of how we came to be here.